Yes. This is the opposite of indoor STEM, really. So we're using the same skills, a lot of the same techniques, but when you take it outdoors, kids have an innate curiosity that awakens when they go out the doors of the classroom. They want to, to learn in this environment, and it's a different way of really sparking their interest. And when you're teaching STEM outdoors, the kids automatically start coming up with the ideas and the creative thought process. They flow very quickly and very smoothly. You can take the compass and place it in that hand with the rectangular base plate. That's the place that this lays on. The rectangular base plate pointing out in front of you. It's really a different style of teaching where we provide the basics and an introduction, but then the kids take it on. They take on their ownership for it and they really develop the product themselves. So in the case of orienteering today, the kids are learning at the beginning how to use a compass and how to follow a bearing, but once they have that accomplished, then we'll be sending them out on orienteering trails where they'll have to use accuracy and they'll have to use math to determine how many paces it will take them to travel a certain distance following a bearing. And then when they come back for their next orienteering program, the kids are going to work in small teams and they will actually lay out their own courses, take all of their own measurements, and then their designs will be tested by other teams of students. So they'll create the project, teams of students will switch trails, they'll test someone else's while another group tests theirs, and at the end we'll sit down and they'll do some analysis of their trails. I love it. Love it, you guys. You're just taking off. In Newburgh, you have the river, but these boys, because of the high violence, don't ever go outside, which is part of the problem. They come inside, they stay inside. You're going to be using a landmark that's right in line with your bearing, and then you're going to actually drop your compass down to your side, let it hang on your neck, and you're going to walk right towards the landmark that you've identified. Being out in this whole environment, and it did, we found they remembered material more over a longer period of time, and the more they're exposed to being outside, the more kind of the anxiety from that life that they live is down and really helped to change the school culture. We have very little disciplinary problems, if any, anymore. It's really more for group work and learning how to collaborate and problem solve. So we'll do projects back at school that directly goes with stuff that they learned here and they learn to work together and solve. And we're big into maker learning and they kind of go hand in hand. My favorite part is that we can stay outdoors and like usually if you're in public school you just stay inside all day. But here we come out like every two weeks we come outside and explore the nature. Mm -hmm. And my favorite thing is it's basically still science and we're still learning about stuff we would learn in class. But out here we actually get to interact with things that they teach us. And it'd be better than just being in class and learning about it. But since we're outside we can use our hands and our eyes, we can actually see a lot. And one. There you go. Quite often when you're from a city environment, that first trip is all about building comfort in the outdoors. So it's not uncommon for urban students to feel very out of place, very anxious about what you know may be happening around them. Everyone seems to think that they're gonna see a bear. So it's a process of getting them, building their comfort level, which a lot of that is also developing a trust in our staff. And we have an amazing staff at the Mohawk Preserve.